mixing with my mixing tip, mixing with the UA Oxide plugin. The Universal Audio Oxide plugin, as described in the uh, plugin of the week, um, is a plugin that emulates uh, analog tape machines. Now, if you go back to the UA collection, you will uh, pro or you may be familiar with the ATR-102 and the Studer A800. Uh, these are both excellent uh, plugins that give some pretty in-depth controls in terms of managing analog tape sound. And what, uh, what Universal Audio has done here with the Oxide plugin is actually given it uh, sort of a simplified interface that you can work with and uh, it also offers the upsampling technology that allows for, for a great detail and work. And, uh, and you can bypass all of the um, uh, amounts of different selections with different tape types and getting into all of the calibrations and all of the controls. And for a person like me, who's a real tweak head with these types of things and have worked with both of these machines a lot in terms of aligning them, setting them up, and actually using them in, in mix and recording sessions you know, for years, um, I love that type of stuff. But in a more simplified way, sometimes a, a plugin like this actually allows you, uh, when it's simplified, to work more effectively and efficiently. So what I want to do is I want to kind of show this off in the mix. And I'll just kind of do a brief overview of some of the settings here, just so you kind of get an idea of what's going on. Essentially, what you have here on the plugin is two tape speeds, 15 and 7.5. And, and what this does is it gives you a different characteristic sound. Essentially, the, uh, the, the uh, tape head itself uh, the width of the gap in the actual playback head determines the frequency response. And the frequency response pattern shifts, and it gives you a bit of a bump on the low end uh, that's different at 15 and 7.5, and, and that's mostly what you listen for. Uh, the top end highest frequency actually peaks out around 17K or so at, at 7.5 inches per second and is a little bit higher uh, or is an octave higher than that at 15 inches per second. Um, there are two equalization circuits, the CCIR, which is European equalization circuit, and the NAB equalization circuit. So these are playback equalization curves. The playback head does not playback all frequencies at equal volume. It actually uh, tails off at 6 dB per octave as you go down. And so the equalization curve is meant to make up for that loss in, uh, in frequency response. Um, you can also turn the noise reduction on or off. So this is basically tape hiss and hum that you had. The heads actually, because they read magnetic fields, um, they're actually sensitive to other magnetic fields generated by almost anything that has electricity <laughs> running through it. And uh, this includes cell phones, uh, anything. And um, so what happens is they, years ago, they created a head guard and this head guard has a piece of moo metal on the other side. And what that does is it protects the heads from any stray electromagnetic radiation. And in spite of all that, there is still some hum that is kind of built into it. You have an input and output control. And this is important because it sets the amount of saturation that you will have. And then you have the input, which just passes the signal through the transformers and electronics of the tape machine or the repro, which goes through uh, just through the repro head. Now, when you look at this tape machine, they don't state in any of the uh, literature, whether it's Studer or uh, any of the like ATR technology. So I'm not um, specifically sure, but just looking at it, the look is identical or exactly like a Studer tape machine. You got the tension arms on the right and the left and the head stack in the middle with the pinch roller over here uh, with the capstan motor that drives the tape speed through. So let's just kind of get right into it on a mix. So now what I have here is this just showing on the mix bus. I'm going to bypass this here. But what I want to do is I want to kind of start with some, some basic things here. So I have a mix and uh, so this is a mix in process. It's sort of a house mix kind of thing. And uh, so uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of go a little bit instrument by instrument here and just kind of show you how you can apply this pretty quickly to kind of get some sounds here. So uh, there's a kick comp here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the last plugin channel. Now uh, you can actually, um, uh, let me actually just do this by going into the universal audio realm here. It's toggling down to oxide. Should have had this set up a little bit ahead of time, but that's okay. So uh, for the mono channels, we'll have this here, and then uh, I can drag a copy of this over for stereo channels, and then we can kind of copy paste our way going across. All right, so here we go. So um, with the kick drum channel, I'm just going to solo this up, and let's just uh, start here. But 
Now, what ends up happening here is you could see there's a significant amount of level. It actually, uh, the calibration internally is set to a plus, uh, I'm sorry, a minus 12 dBFS, which means that if you had a zero VU signal coming from your console, it would show up at zero on this VU meter, uh, plus four line level, 1.23 volts, however you want to define it. It's typically calibrated with a one kilohertz tone. Now, when I set this, I can get different characteristics here. Uh, I'm actually going to set my input volume here just to kind of get something as a little bit more reasonable level-wise. Right, but it is also driving. And I want to make sure I balance the output here for the sound. And you can hear the tape compression in there. And then I have uh, two speeds, 15 and 7.5. And so let's check out the difference there. So the, the bump actually works or lines up much more uh, better here at 15 inches per second. And then we have two equalization curves. Now, the NAB equalization curve and the CCIR curve, many people feel the CCIR curve, CCIR curve excuse me, the European uh, version, is more accurate. Um, and what I found in general is that this tends to be have a little bit more of a solid mid-range and what I found with the NAB curve, it has a, just a little bit more top end and a little bit more low end and kind of dipped a little bit in the middle overall. And I kind of like that NAB equalization. So I'm going to leave the tape noise off just to kind of keep that from being an accum uh, accumulated kind of thing. And essentially what I can do here is I can determine how much I want to drive this kick drum. So just listen to it in and out. So if I want to drive it a little bit less, and I'm going to kind of cut the difference in between there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the settings from this and kind of leave this set up. So what I want to do is I kind of want to work here um, a bit. we got some other things going on here, some claps. And let me just kind of uh, scoot across here to where a lot of this stuff is happening, just so we can uh, speed up the process here. Uh, we also got the bass uh, tracks, so I'll just kind of go right to here. So this is actually, I'm, I'm going to paste the settings in on this, and then I'm going to copy my settings on over to here. Now there are actually two channels that make up this clap sound. So what I want to do is I want to focus on this a little bit, and what I could do here is I can drive this a little bit more. Now, the interesting kind of thing here is that when working with VU meters, this what the way that this is showing, it's actually showing the post-processing output. So when it's not showing the input signal, it's actually showing the post-tape processing, but pre-output level control. So when you adjust it here, you're adjusting this for the amount of saturation to set the tonal character, and then you're using this to set the output to balance it. And now I could actually go in and make this different for each track. So I kind of like a little bit more of that openness and sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this right over to here and this will kind of And this is one that is just uh, an effect track. So 
So this is actually adding in a fair amount of, of, of um, this is adding in a fair amount of compression. When you get to percussive instruments, usually they're recorded with a level that's somewhere like around minus 10. Uh, even even like snare drums and kick drums quite often are like at minus three. As you start to go up towards zero, then you get like heavier tape compression. So unlike the full like Studer emulation 800 where you have all the different tape formulations and also the calibrations, this is pretty much a plug in and go kind of thing. And then you just set your calibration level. So the next thing I, I want to mix in here is the bass and uh, and kind of work with that a little bit. So this is on a stereo track and I want to mix this in. So So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to solo this out. Hold on, gotta make sure I grab the right part of the knob. And then there's a counter line here, so I'm just gonna drag that over, copy that over. Now let's uh, let's go back. So you can already hear like some of the openness that's kind of uh, that gets uh, brought into all of this. Now I'm going to bring in some hi hats. I'm not sure I'll bring in every instrument, but let's uh, let's kind of work our way across and uh, add that in. So let's see what we got here. So there's a couple different elements here, but I probably am not going to be compressing it as heavily. Just copy those settings right over to here. And then add this along to our chain here. That's A, B, this in and out. So uh, one of the things that I, I feel like I'm doing here, although it's kind of fun sounding on the surface, is I'm swallowing up this kick drum a little bit too much. Losing just a little bit too much of the of the transient impact. And what's kind of what ends up happening with uh, with this plugin is you start to saturate. It basically, think of it kind of as, as you're pushing more level, essentially what's happening is the ratio is increasing and increasing and increasing. So the higher the level, the more resistant the magnetic particles um, uh, virtually would become to accepting the signal. And, and at some point it brick levels out and then you go into distortion. So the more you continue to push up, the more it just, no more passes basically. And you get into just um, flat out flabby distortion. And so when you actually push it, what happens is you're pushing that transient peak. And the more you push the overall signal level up, the more you start to cut away the transient. Because the VU is not going to show you how far that peak jumps up above there. So this is showing you on average a volume unit, essentially.
And for some of these things, um, I'm gonna, you know, uh, you know, because when we actually start getting into um, uh, some of this stuff, like tom fills and things like that, we're gonna take sort of a similar approach that we do to the drums. Uh, let's bring in some of the keyboard elements. So I'm just going to copy paste a couple things there and then uh, bring this up into the next uh, phase. And uh, that's going to be the key. So let's bring it. All right, so two of the main parts in here. Uh, are these two guys right here. So these two parts that kind of a little bit left and a little bit right. So I'm gonna drive this a little bit higher and I'm gonna back off my gain accordingly. And uh, I'm going to copy my settings over here and do like a similar type of effect. So just to give you an idea of what this sounds like here, you know, if I just kind of bypass this, <laughs> of course it stops. And with. All right. All right. And now what I'm doing here is is kind of goes a little bit against what is recommended and the reason part of the reason why I'm doing this instead of starting my mix with this is this is kind of the mix is pretty much done. So to go ahead and put this at the beginning would then affect the sort of transient design, if you will, of the mix as I have it processed and be less effective. So if you're not starting the mix with that, I've found generally in you putting it in after the fact, it's better to put it afterwards because you've created that consistency in the sound. Whereas this, if you start over saturating with the tape, it's going to change the way the rest of your compressors and the rest of your chain reacts. And you may not like the results as much. Now this is a little bit filtered down, so I'm gonna change change the characteristic here also to kind of create a different kind of vibe. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do, do a quick uh, copy and paste of my settings into there. So we have a like a delay based synth that's kind of in here. And I can actually saturate it by really dragging it in. All right. Love these uh, these pads that are here. So I'm just gonna pop something on here. Do something that is kind of a uh, little more open. Now they do swell, so I'm not gonna get. You know they will change. 
See like there it'll start to saturate. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm not saturating on that end. Just because I don't think it's appropriate, not because it's a necessarily a bad thing to do, but maybe the way that you want to use the plugin. And what this is doing is um adding a nice texture to everything. I'm gonna go back and tweak something with the bass. I think I'm kind of swallowing it up a little bit here too. So I'm just gonna back off. Let that kind of open up a little bit more. And there's a, a counter line that kind of runs along with this. Do the same kind of thing. switch up these two bass parts to a CCIR curve. And I'm going to switch them to seven and a half. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to play with this to kind of get it to work uh, uh, to clean up a little bit of the low end here on the This is on the bass part. So let's So you could hear what I'm, what I'm doing here is able to kind of create a little bit of tonal coloration and kind of bring in some presence and depth into the mix. And it's very quick and easy to kind of work and play with, uh, one of the reasons why I really love it, um, and an easy one to kind of manage. Um, there's also a way uh, to manage this here if, if you want to um, take on something here to the effect of running like an overdrive type of thing. Uh, where uh, you could take certain types of effects here and uh, kind of run it in uh, a sort of parallel style. And uh, what this is doing is by, this is sort of punishing the tape, creating like a, just a pure distortion characteristic. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and then kind of bring this in here. Uh, let's see, I got a parallel stem group. Yeah, here we go. All right, so. I mute this out. And that's so that's pretty intense. 
heavy distortion, but I can mix this in with the original. Slightly. So it's fairly saturated, but not as heavily saturated. And then what I'll do is I'll just copy that, uh, paste that into uh, the different uh, setups here. And, uh, and then we can uh, run these all at the same time. just to give it a bit of an edge and then run this in as a parallel chain. And then even uh, you could throw this onto the mix bus. But just to give you an idea of how the, functionally you can really um, play around with this idea, just working with this um, and get a lot of different things out of it. You can use it for compression. Um, I find it really great for kind of tonal balancing as you really uh, start to drive it into this thing and then start switching between the different settings here. There's, there's a, a great way to kind of create some tonal shape to things that maybe are lacking a little bit. This is all a program track, but you could do this just as well with um, any kind of music. I mean, analog tape is just, you know... Uh, um, you know, all, pretty much all of rock music <laughs> was sort of run there, but it also... Um, it also provides like kind of a warmth and a listenability uh, to any kind of track, you know, even uh, like a dance track or um, a house track like this. And uh, you can give an edge to something, you could give some body, add some depth, add some air, all by just playing with some very simple controls and how much you saturate it. So as you're approaching it, just kind of think that uh, go lower levels for less saturation and just a little more general warming go heavier if you're really trying to, you know, kind of uh, re, you know, basically redefine a sound, kind of crush it into place, um, and you can achieve a lot of effects. Very cool plugin. Um, I really like it, and uh, um, I've been using it a lot lately in this type of way. I'm just kind of throwing it here um, uh, without rehearsal, just on this mix that I'm in the middle of as part of the mixing with my classes, and uh if you're interested, um, you can uh, join me there by going to my website, mpginsider.com. And from there, just click on uh, Mixing with Mike, and you can find out more information about uh, how to join in on the live classes. All right, that uh, wraps up this uh, um, mixing tip of the week, uh, mixing with the UA Oxide plugin.